Welcome to Thursday's actual solo episode. I didn't feel like waiting for my sister to put Poppy down to be able to record. Um, so I'm doing it by myself. It's Monday. I am crushing work today because it's a little bit overwhelming thinking about how the holidays are coming up. So my mom arrives tomorrow. She'll be here till Friday. Tanya is coming over to record on Friday. And then I'm driving to my mom's house on Saturday morning and I'll get back on Tuesday. And then my husband's parents are here and like, then it's Christmas. So I'm panicked thinking, oh my God, I need to have so much done for the podcast because I would like to take the week of Christmas off. We will still have episodes, but I just don't want to have to do anything that week. So I'm just like scrambling. Holy geez. I feel like I have to get, you know, two weeks worth of work done in a day. I'm also dropping off this stuff for the family that we adopted for the holidays. So I got everything organized yesterday. I have to put everything for each kid in a separate. I bought these big sacks from HomeSense to put all the stuff for each kid in a separate sack. And I swear to God, it was made Like it was just meant to be is what I was trying to say because I went into HomeSense. I couldn't find anything like a gift bag that would fit everything. So I come across these sacks. You know how they make the big, it's like supposed to be a stocking, I guess, but it's just like a big Christmas sack. So one had unicorns on it with like fuzz around the top. I was like, oh my God, this is perfect. One of the girls, it says she loves unicorns. And then another one had dinosaurs on it, like holiday dinosaurs. Amazing. They have a two-year-old boy. And then the other one had like little ballerinas dancing and it was a pink bag. I was like, oh my God, this is perfect for the four-year-old. Like it just worked out perfectly. So what I think I'm going to do is pick up Milo before I go drop those off because I just want him to experience that. We've been explaining to him what we're doing. He came with us to pick out the toys for the kids. And yeah, like, I don't know how much he gets it, but I would like him to get it and be a part of dropping it off and just so we can talk about it some more. So yeah, that's uh, been exciting. We are... As I said, going to my mom's house on Saturday for a few days. So that's when we're going to do our Christmas with my parents and Poppy and my sister. My husband has to work, so he will be at home. But then his parents are coming to stay with us for the holidays. And then also some of his family from Switzerland are coming. So it'll be a big holiday, you know, shindig with my husband's family over the actual Christmas. And then our my in-laws will be here over New Year's Eve. So I'm like, what should we do on New Year's Eve? Like, we actually have a chance now to go and do something. But I'm like, what do people do for New Year's Eve that are almost 40 years old and have a child? You know? And I don't know why we didn't put this together a long time ago and actually plan something. Because now everything is booked up, like every nice hotel, like I would have loved to stay at one of those little vintage kind of hotels that has the outdoor like hot tubs and, you know, it's just like a cute Christmas Hallmark movie kind of vibe. But all those places are booked up now. So I don't know what we're going to do. My husband's like, should we just like stay at the local hotel like downtown? (laughs) Like I have no idea. We could also go into Toronto, but I'm like... And do what? I was looking at some comedy, um, like comedy club kind of things. They have comedy shows going on on New Year's Eve and we love going to stand up comedy. So that's an option. But yeah, I don't know. I just, I don't know what to do. So if you guys have any New Year's Eve plans and you're in the GTA, like just tell me what do people do for New Year's Eve nowadays? Um, you know? I'm not young anymore, like heading out to the club. So looking forward to that. If we actually end up making plans, I should really get on that. You know, I've looked at a few things and I'm like, oh, it's booked up. And then I kind of give up. But like, we should really plan something. 
Um, have you guys seen And Just Like That? So obviously I watched the first season. It's like the spinoff of Sex and the City. I I think when I was in my undergrad, I binge watched the entire series of Sex and the City. I hadn't seen it prior to that. And I loved it, obviously. And it's so funny. Like, I remember the beginning of the HBO thing, like being etched in my brain when it's like, and it's like, like, oh my gosh. So anyways, I watched the first season of And Just Like That. I liked it. It was just like a fun show to watch. I just like seeing what they're wearing and I like the characters and I don't know, seeing New York City and like the restaurants and all that kind of stuff. Um, this past week, it was my period menstrual phase and I was exhausted. Like, By the afternoon, I would work, 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 work all morning. And then by the afternoon, I was like, okay, I am done. So I would literally lay on the couch and watch and just like that in the afternoon, which I'm very lucky because I work for myself. And so I can do that. I can like rearrange my schedule to be able to do that, which was lovely. Usually I'm such a busybody that I can't fathom sitting still and like, focusing my attention on one thing. But I was so tired this past week. So I just let myself watch and just like that. My husband saw a few episodes because after Milo would go to bed, I would put on the next episode and he was like, what? What are you watching? Like there's all these sex scenes. (laughs) And he's like, thank God we got blinds installed. Like the neighbors would think we're watching porn just like out in the open, broadcasting it for the whole neighborhood to see because we have these big windows right near our TV (laughs) that go literally right out to the sidewalk. Like you could see people walking by would see what we're watching. I was like, I know, like, oh my God. But anyways, I'm so obsessed with that show. But I'm going to give a spoiler alert. So if you haven't seen the second season and you want to see it and not have this be spoiled, don't listen to this next part. But like the fact that Aiden had, like I hated how it ended with Aiden having to go back because his 14 year old son was having issues. Okay, like that's fine. I totally get that. I support that decision. But the fact that you can't carry on a relationship even even if it's like long distance and you guys just travel to see each other every once in a while, like they were doing one week on, one week off and he was coming into the city. But like, so see each other less and just have a long distance relationship for a while. Like your son could be totally fine and back on track in like a year. So you're going to throw away this magnificent, perfect, ideal relationship with someone that you've loved like your whole life because you're a plane ride away. Like it just made no sense. And I hated that it ended that way. So I'm curious what the next season, is there a next season? There must be. Like, what is it going to be, you know? And like Carrie moved apartments for that relationship. He, and like that whole thing was stupid too. Like, I swear I did like the show. It's just like these things bothered me. Like he wouldn't go in her old apartment because of the bad memories that it had. I was like, really? Like, let's not be dramatic here. Okay. Um, But anyways, I love that show so much. And I love the new characters. Um, Yeah, just super into it. So I should actually look up when the next season, because I'm pretty sure this season ended a while ago. I just never watched it. Um, So yeah, looking forward to the next season. So this episode is about redefining intimacy with your partner and specifically in the season of life where you've had a baby you have tiny kids because you know it's a special season of life let's just say um and relationships change and the reason I had the idea for this topic is because I recorded an episode with Dr. Rachel Olivier the other day. And one of the things that we talked about was redefining intimacy. So she specializes in sexual health and postpartum. That episode will come out in January of 2024. 
So yeah, it got me thinking about that. And then I think I brought up in the episode with her how I had recorded a solo episode a long time ago. It's episode 129. And it was about relationship compassion because during that time, everyone was talking about self-compassion. And I was like, okay, like I get it. Self-compassion. Yes. But at the same time, I was in the season of having a small child. My relationship didn't look like it did or feel like it did before we had a child. And I was like, what about relationship compassion? Like not comparing not only your relationship to other people's relationships that you see on social media, especially on social media, because like, hello, that's like a highlight reel. And people are like, come over here and hug me and let's dance romantically in front of the Christmas tree. And I'm going to put this like nice saying over it that makes it look like we're, you know, having sex every single day and just like so into each other. Um, So not comparing our relationship to relationships we see on social media Uh, And also the biggest thing is not comparing our current relationship to the relationship that we used to have before having kids. And so I did a whole episode, again, episode 129 on that topic. And it was similar to what Rachel and I were talking about when it comes to sex and intimacy in postpartum, and then also just moving into you know, your postpartum for the rest of your life, but moving into when your children are starting to get older, but they're still young kids and life is just different. So I put out question boxes on my Instagram asking you guys just a few questions about this topic because I was interested to see what you guys had to say. And some of the things that you guys said, like when I asked, how would you define intimacy in your relationship? So basically what is making you feel connected? Let me look up the freaking definition of intimacy while I am on this topic, because so many people hear intimacy and they think sex Okay, so intimacy, a close familiarity or friendship, closeness. Uh, Okay, the euphemistic definition, like what's the definition of euphemistic? The euphemistic definition means an intimate act, especially sexual intercourse. So what is intimacy? Yeah. Yeah. So intimacy basically means familiarity. Intimacy is a close relationship. Mutual acceptance, nurturance, and trust are shared at some level. Anywho, that's that. Um, Because lots of people hear the word intimacy and they're like, oh, sex. Um, When really, if that's how you're defining it, then... If your sex life with your partner changes after having kids, then you could be like, oh, there's something wrong with our relationship because we're not close. It's the same kind of thing when I talk about sleeping separately from my husband. When I say sleeping physically side by side does not make a happy, healthy relationship. Like there's people that sleep side by side that fucking hate each other. And, you know, like... Just because you sleep physically side by side does not mean that you have this amazing relationship where you guys are like connected. Do you know what I'm saying? And I feel like the same thing goes for intimacy. You could have sex with your partner all the time and you guys could like have zero connection. You could feel so lonely and not connected to your partner and still have sex with them all the time. Do you know what I'm saying? So We have to break out of this like um, narrow view of relationships and intimacy and what it means and what's actually important. And that could look different couple to couple and person to person, which then gets tricky because if your husband feels one way about it and you feel another way, it's almost like love languages, right? Then it's like, 
having the conversation, which most people do not do, and then meeting somewhere in the middle and understanding what is important to your partner. So <clears throat> some of the ways that you guys defined intimacy was feeling supported, which is so important, uh, feeling like you're being listened to, talking about more than logistics. So a lot of people said having like a meaningful conversation, which literally can be hard when you have little kids. Like sometimes I try and explain something to Pre about something that happened that day, like work or whatever. And you literally can't get a sentence out without Milo trying to like say something, mommy, mommy, can I have a little, like, I'm like, oh my God, can I just say something to this man that I live with without being interrupted? Like, whew. anyways, and then at the same time, I'll be like, oh my God, I'll I'll tell you after, like once he goes to bed. And then that time comes and I'm like, no, I'm tired. I just want to watch Below Deck and go read my Kindle. I don't want to have this like big conversation, you know? So that can be difficult. Uh, quality time with no distractions. This came up so much. And again, how one person defines quality time might look different from another, like to another person. So do you actually sit and think? Thinking is my favorite thing. I love thinking, but I'm such a busybody that sometimes I don't give myself a chance to think, which is why I actually sat down and wrote my notes, see, for this episode, because I want to think about it. So do you actually have a discussion with your partner about what quality time looks like for you guys? Like how you would define quality time? Because uh, it's one of those generic sayings like, oh yeah, quality time. Okay, but like what does that mean to you? And how can you have more of that in your life if it's important to you? Um, some people said thoughtfulness and consideration, which is huge. Um, my husband and probably me too, we're both acts of service people. And I remember having this conversation with my mom when I packed up Milo and I's stuff, went to my mom's for whatever it was. My husband stayed home and I remember thinking, oh my God, I forgot the charger for his nightlight or his nightlight, something important anyways. It was when Milo was younger and it was packed in the suitcase. Like my husband had packed it without even telling me or like feeling like your partner is thoughtful and they are somewhat aware of what your day-to-day -day is and try to do things, even small little things to make your day-to-day -day easier or more enjoyable. It's just like living a different life. And I remember telling my mom, like some people have kids with someone who has zero consideration. They're not thoughtful whatsoever and everything is on them. So for example, if I forgot to pack something, there's no fucking chance that it's in the suitcase or it's in Milo's lunch bag or whatever it might be. Do you know how many times I go to pack Milo's lunch in the morning and it's already made? Like without even a conversation or how many times like the laundry's done when Milo needs his snowsuit that was all muddy for whatever. It's like you want someone that is thoughtful and involved in the life that you're having with your children, if that makes sense. Um, someone else said cuddling and physical touch, which is interesting because again, intimacy, we always think about sex, but at the same time, I think a lot of women, let's say we have young kids, which most of us do if you're listening, and the last thing you want to do is have sex. And even if you're the kind of person that's like, I didn't want to, but then once we did, I was super happy that we did because that's very common as well. But I feel like if your mindset is like, I don't want to have sex, you will almost avoid physical touch 
with your partner because you're thinking that their expectations, if you go and like snuggle them or like whatever it might be, you're thinking that their expectation is that it's going to lead to sex. So then you just ignore them, not ignore them, but like you don't initiate any kind of physical touch. You don't want to cuddle. You don't want them to think that you're wanting it to lead to sex. And I feel like this is a huge issue that people don't talk about or acknowledge to be like, I want to cuddle and, you know, maybe lay down like skin to skin. Like, what are we, newborns? (laughs) But I don't want it to lead to anything more than that. And if it ends up doing it, like if it ends up leading to something else and you're the one that initiated it, then so be it. Like, yay, hooray. But like, There shouldn't be the pressure of physical touch or cuddling leading to something more. And if your partner makes you feel that way, you're probably more likely to just avoid physical touch at all costs, which which then leads to not feeling connected and having like physical distance between you and your partner. So if that is the case in your situation like have a conversation about it have a conversation um that's just one of my profound thoughts for this episode so another question that i asked you guys was what do you want more of with your romantic partner do you know how many people said put the fucking phone down like phones are a problem Phones are a problem. And when I think about how much, just this morning, okay, I wake up, I turn off my alarm, which is on my goddamn phone, and then I go pee, I like wash my face, get my PJs back on, and I go downstairs. I am always carrying my phone. Always. Just that in and of itself is annoying. And I remember my husband was sitting on the couch having coffee this morning and I'm starting to walk down the stairs and my phone is in my hand and I realized that and I was like, why do I carry my phone around constantly? Like, why didn't I just leave it in my bedroom until I go back upstairs to start work when they leave for school? Why is my phone constantly in my hand. And I get it. Like it's my work. I love, I know you shouldn't, but I love checking my email and just seeing, you know, what's up in all my social media baloney when I first wake up and I'm having my coffee. But because I'm doing that now, I'm not even acknowledging my husband that's sitting beside me. And I'm not a morning person in the sense that like, Once I've had my coffee and I've had time to like actually wake up, I'm a busybody. I'm like, let's go, 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 bing, bang, boom. But I don't like having a conversation in the morning. It takes me a while, you know, like I just want to be by myself scrolling Pinterest or something. And I don't know if it's because I've lived by myself for so long that I just, that's my morning routine, but I should kind of change it up. Like why am I sitting there with my phone? before my husband leaves for work. Uh, When Milo comes downstairs, I'm more mindful of it and I'll put it down. But usually we put on like a Disney show while he's eating his breakfast. And then I'm like getting his lunch ready while my husband goes and showers. But yeah, it's like phones are a problem. And then when we get home from school, I've been really mindful about not having my phone out. You probably notice I don't story as much like in the evenings. Because I don't want to have my phone with me constantly. Like the fact that it's even around us all the time. I'm like, what message is that sending to Milo? Like why during bedtime routine is mom's phone like on the bed and dad's phone is like on the bed? Even though and like we're the worst because we'll be like, oh, yeah, like we should look into plans for New Year's and then we'll like grab our phone and see like New Year's Eve, Toronto, like let's scroll and see what's up. Why? Like, oh, it's like as soon as you have any little question in your mind, you're like picking up your phone to look at the answer. 
It's so irritating. But so many of you said just time together with no distractions, which basically means no screens. So like turn the TV off. The TV is less, it's more of like a background thing. You can still like have a conversation and be present with your partner. The phone is so much more fucking irritating. Like, so my whole thing, like what I wanted to try and do, I remember doing an episode with, oh my gosh, and I can't remember her name. She's married to one of the guys that was in Florida Georgia line. I'm the worst. Anyways, she was on the podcast and she was saying how in the evenings they will put their phones in like a basket on the counter or something and leave them there until after the kids go to bed or like when they go to go to bed. And I'm like, oh my God, I love that. Like you just get it out of your freaking reach, you know? Like what, what did we used to do before we had phones? Like, I never had a cell phone growing up. Like, what did my family do? What did we do? Anyways, um, time together with no kids. Again, that can be super difficult because usually by the time kids go to bed, parents are fucking exhausted. Um, And then what kind of quality time would that be, right? Um, someone said prioritize us, which I've talked about this before. It is so hard to prioritize your relationship because it's the easiest thing to not prioritize. But at the end of the day, it's probably one of the most, if not the most important thing. So yeah, I don't know, guys, I'm right with you. Uh, being relaxed, that's huge. Like I have a hard time until Milo is fully asleep and I know that he's sleeping. I find it very hard to relax. Um, and people are just so busy and there's so many things to like stress about and so many like family dynamics. It's hard to be relaxed. So how do you relax? These are all questions that are great things to bring up with your partner. You know, if you're looking for something to talk about, talk about these things. Uh, Having a conversation, again, a conversation that's not about logistics, rarely happens. Uh, And to be honest, some of my favorite times, like we always think like, oh, intimacy and quality time has to be, you know, we're going out for a nice dinner and we're like dressed nice, maybe staying at a hotel. I can tell you right now that some of my absolute favorite time, times with my husband is when we go and run errands without our child. So if my in-laws are in town, Milo stays home with them. My husband and I are like, let's go to Canadian Tire and HomeSense and, you know, go to the post office. Like that is some of my favorite time with my husband, probably because it's very similar to our life before we had a child. Like we're just like dinking around the city doing random stuff. Like, oh, you want to stop and grab lunch somewhere? Like it's just so casual and like I just like to spend time with him it doesn't have to be like some fancy sit down dinner like we could just like browse Walmart and it's fun you know grocery store (sighs) so fun anywho um so many people because we asked the question how has your relationship changed for the better post kids so many people said that it hasn't which like it's so sad um But again, these are conversations that I think couples really need to have and make a plan moving forward. Like try to prioritize your relationship. Like what does quality time mean to you? So some people mentioned that you guys are supporting each other with the kids. Your appreciation of your partner has increased, which like 100%, I agree with that. But they have to be like an equal partner, you know, some people don't have that. And so it's hard. You're feeling resentment instead of being appreciative of your partner. Um, We love seeing them be a parent. Communication has improved. 
teamwork, you let the little things go now and you're both more mature, which makes sense. And then what are some things that you miss about your relationship? Um, like now that you have children, the number one thing was like time, just having time. And I swear to God, days go by so fast right now. I'm like, what the, you know, there's no time. Like I want time. Like there's just no time. It's wild. By the time Milo goes to bed, I'm like, like, where did the day go? Like what the, anyways, time to just do things, doing nothing. So many of you guys miss just doing nothing, like having nothing on the agenda, just like live in life. And we have days like that some weekends where we're literally in our pajamas all day, just like dinking around the house, like doing whatever. And those are really enjoyable days. And I think they are very few and far between because lives get so busy, especially if you have multiple kids with like birthday parties and all that kind of stuff. Um, people said being spontaneous and just being like, oh, hey, like you want to go do this at any given time? Like frick yeah. Um, less stress for sure. No interruptions. Uh, yeah. Staying up late and then knowing that you can sleep in. Oh my God, yes. Like my husband and I stayed up till midnight, maybe even later on Saturday. And like we knew we couldn't really sleep in. Milo was up early in my bed at 7 a.m. And, but like we stayed up late. I had two glasses of wine, okay, on Saturday. It was so nice and fun. Never does that happen. But again, like, we did it. It was fine. And we survived. Sunday was a non-issue. We went to the freaking mall two weeks before Christmas with a five-year-old and it was fine. Like we just need to do it more often. It's so easy to like fall into these routines. Um, anywho, um, traveling, of course, having sex whenever you wanted to, of course, having money, LOL, and no resentment. Someone said like they miss before having kids because they didn't feel resentment for their partner. And it made me think of that Oprah thing that I'm pretty sure she said. And I think someone confirmed that she did say this, but I think about it all the time because someone asked her why she and Stedman never got married um, and don't want to be married. And she explained that with marriage comes expectations of your partner that never existed before. And I just loved that. And when the person said, responded with resentment, it made me think of that Oprah quote. I swear to God, I read it in a magazine or something. I was probably like 19 <laughs> and it just stuck with me forever. Um, once you have kids, once you're married, you have so many expectations of that person that were never there before. And it's not to say that your expectations are not warranted. It's just, it changes the dynamic of your relationship so much. So if you have these expectations and your partner is not meeting them, it's like resentment time. So anyways, that, that was a fun episode. I was like, I didn't feel like recording. I, I'm in like wrapping gifts mode and uh, just like prepping for holiday shenanigans. But this was a good episode and I'm very excited for next week's solo. It is, it's my pep talk for everyone for the holidays. Um, when you have kids and you're going to, you know, family events and whatnot, we're gonna uh, we're gonna do a pep talk. So stay tuned for that. Thank you guys so much for listening. If you're curious, the trailer for my sister and I's new podcast, which will start January 1st, will be out on Christmas morning. So Merry Christmas to everyone. It's like a two and a half little two and a half minute little fun trailer. So I hope everyone listens to it. Um, other than that, our first episode will air January 1st. It's a Monday starting the new year, right? So yeah, thank you guys so much for listening and please rate, review, subscribe, all that jazz. I'm very excited for 2024. 
shit's getting crazy. So don't miss it. All right. Thanks guys. Bye.